Let's take a look at Groove Agent 4's Beat Agent. Groove Agent 4 has three separate agents, an acoustic agent, a beat agent, and a percussion agent. The beat agent is really well suited for doing a lot of EDM and hip hop style production, but it's really not limited to that. Let's check out some of the exciting features. There could be four independent agents loaded, each responding to different MIDI channels of one, two, three, and four. If you want to see a piano keyboard to trigger samples, you can see that at the bottom here by activating this icon or hiding it by hitting the same icon. The heart of Beat Agent is the 16 pads that kind of make up the MPC style paradigm. This works with a number of different controllers, such as the Steinberg CMC PD controller or any MPC or MIDI controllers that have pads. So it's really easy to get totally set up for that. So there are 16 pads per bank. There are eight banks, and each pad could have up to eight samples in different velocity layers. There are also a, there's also a second layer of pads called pattern pads, which we'll look at in just a couple of minutes. You can toggle back and forth between the instrument and pattern pads by hitting the E key. One of the things that we wanted to do is make working with different controllers very simple. We see the MIDI note number that it's responding to in the upper right hand corner. If I wanted to assign any other MIDI note number from different controllers or pads, I can just activate this hardware mapping, right click, and I could just learn the trigger note and hit the note and that would automatically assign it. You can also manually assign a trigger note and now for the first time you could actually have multiple pads having the same trigger note. So if you wanted three bass drums on different pads to have the same MIDI note, you can do that very easily. One of the things we wanted to do is to actually capture the essence of the sound of the original 12-bit sampling revolution. If I wanted to select all the pads and we'll play a pattern, one of the things we wanted to do is to mimic, we have in the standard sound quality, the 32-bit floating point. We also have a vintage, which mimics the 12-bit playback engines and sampling characteristics. And the third mode that's really interesting called turntable. So often people would take a 33 LP record, play it at 45 RPM uh, to take less sampling space and then slow it down. And that would cause some artifacts. And they physically modeled that. They have standard resolution, vintage 12-bit, and turntable. One of the editing paradigms that is a good thing to understand is that whatever pad is selected, you can do editing across multiple pads or a single pad. So depending on what is the actively selected pad that you see with this yellow outline. Now, if I want to do some of my basic editing, we'll play our pattern. I could take my sample here and if I wanted to do a fade in of a particular sample, I could do that. Or if I wanted to truncate, to have a different start or end time of the sample, just by moving those elements. So zoom in if you want to get down to the sample level, just like we do in Cubase and WaveLab. So very easy to kind of navigate. Some other very handy controls if we're playing, if I select the bass drum here, the kick, I can make that kick drum louder or softer. It's one of two kick drums used in this batter. Or if I want to take the snare and pan it, and any of these parameters, you can right click and then learn the continuous controller so your MIDI controller can control that very easily. There's a lot of really interesting things to do with pitch. So let's say I select my, my bass drum here. I could adjust my envelope amount all the way over to the right. And then now we can listen to that in context. Let's take the bell and just randomize the pitch. So again, complete independent control for whatever is selected. 
to get really interesting results. Let's say I wanted to solo my hi-hat here, and I wanted to run that through a filter. I could just, with that hi-hat selected, six different filter types. So I could apply that independently for one source. Or if I wanted to apply it globally to all the sounds in the kit. So very easy to really dial in sounds. There's also very comprehensive effects. So we can have four master global effects. We could have four effects per agent or kit. And we could also have four aux sends that are dedicated to the particular agent. So if I wanted to come here, I could just say, let's add a reverb onto send one. I'm gonna just solo just my snare. Go back to our edit page. At this point, I can just go to aux one. And we can listen to that in context. So once again, very easy to do all of your effect routing. And if I wanted to route any of the particular pads to separate outputs into my host application, I have my 16 stereo outputs and different buses for each agent as well. We've also added MIDI effects. So if I want to take that snare again, I could add rudiments. So if I want to add like flams, drags, roughs, and these could be synchronized to the tempo if you want. MIDI delays. But let's say I want the pitch of the delays to go up. If I find that I wanted to replace, let's say this snare sound, I could go to and load up and I could just go to my, my VST sound. And then you could just type in snare, select that sound and then just double click. And replace the sound. So you go to a different kit. So very easy, and again, you could just select it and double click and replace the sounds. The patterns are incredibly powerful as well. These respond to MIDI notes. So I could sequence with these. So I'm just gonna turn on my click track here, and then let's say if we hit record. And then as I hit my different MIDI notes, I recorded the sequence of the different programs. If I really want to kind of tweak the different programs and change them and customize them, I could go to edit and click on the pattern tab right here. Select the hi-hats here, adjust the velocities, or if I wanted to erase events or add other events in, I could just kind of come directly here, and that's my new pattern. Now, once I have that done, you can drag and drop directly onto your timeline, and once you've done that, if you want, you could click right here, and if you wanted to make 
your different drum maps. And if you changed the different patterns, you could literally just kind of drag and drop directly onto a new pattern, hold down alt. And now you can do variations of that pattern. So you can say, I just want it every other hi-hat, just right click here. So it's kind of like the little mini Cubase drum editor directly inside. And you could have all of your patterns tailored for you right there. While there's a lot of dance oriented kits, there's a lot of other interesting things. So it's not just drum. So if I wanted to load a different kit with samples, there's gonna be one, I think it's a good example. So we'll load this up, select our right pattern mode. And again, these will sync to whatever tempo you have. Or if you just wanted to go to a completely random different pattern, you could just kind of click here, load up a different one. So let's say if I even wanted to just right click, you could also just load different pattern groups independently. Or let's load a kit, uh, this kind of interesting one here that I wouldn't think I'd be interested in, but it's uh, kind of cool, it's called Marching Madness. So this is... Or if you wanted to come over here and say, okay, I want to find something for classicals to orchestral stuff. and all sorts of different pop kits, uh, R&B, techno, dance, EDM. So a wide variety. And again, you can just kind of drag and drop any audio, which we'll show in the next tutorial, but it'll give you a really powerful way of being able to kind of really craft the different drum beats for your production. So the beat agent is incredibly powerful.